Well, hello everyone. You're watching Surgical Utopia, and welcome back to another episode of Maxillary Osteotomy. Today, we will be studying about the Lefort One Osteotomy, which is one of the most commonly used procedure to correct mid-face deformities. It also allows correction in three dimensions, which includes advancement, retrusion, elongation, and shortening of the face. The conditions where the Lefort Osteotomy is indicated or vertical maxillary axis like in cases where there is long face syndrome or in bimaxillary protrusion superior repositioning of the maxilla to correct open bites in cases where the advancement of maxilla is needed for the correction of cleft palate and post traumatic patients to correct open bites when combined with mandibular procedures and correction of the cans that is downward slanting of the globe of the eye class 3 malar occlusion is also one of the most common reasons for performing lefort 1 osteotomy lefort 1 osteotomy is done in cases where there is class 2 deformity and there is retrognathic mandible lefort 1 osteotomy is also used in combination with bilateral sagittal split osteotomy that is bsso in correcting the secondary maxillary effects seen in asymmetrical mandibular deformities now coming to the surgical techniques for lefort 1 osteotomy for this procedure the vestibular incision is given in the high mucobuccal fold starting from first molar region of one side to the first molar region of the another side and by doing this the lateral and medial buttresses of the maxilla will be exposed so you can see over here this is the incision which is given in the mucobuccal fold of the maxillary vestibule from one molar region of one side to that one of the other side after incision is given the section will be done in order to expose the anterior surface of the maxilla and this dissection is done superiorly at the level of the infraorbital nerve and laterally it will be done around the lateral maxillary buttress until the terigo maxillary junction is reached after the exposure is done osteotomy cuts will be made the first osteotomy cut is made at the lateral maxillary buttress and it is directed on the same side of the piriform rim that is ipsilateral piriform rim similar procedure is done on the contralateral side that is the opposite side after the first osteotomy then a second and thin osteotomy cut will be given to complete the posterior osteotomies of the lateral and medial maxillary buttresses after which a u shaped osteotome is used to separate the nasal septum from the maxilla and the posterior maxillary wall is fractured with this osteotome a curved osteotome is used for the separation at the terigo maxillary junction once the osteotomy cuts are done then a downward fracture of the maxilla is done with digital pressure in order to allow for the nas dissection of the nasal floor and nasal mucosa over here right when we are doing the down fracture there may be bleeding from the osteomatis and the torn mucosa and this should be controlled with initial packing after the downward fracture the maxilla is free and the soft tissues will be stretched in order to allow a greater range of motion so after mobilization of the maxilla by the downward fracture it can be repositioned in a pre planned or pre operative planned position and it will be fixed with 2 mm l shaped titanium plates and screw one on each side on the maxillary buttress for stability and after this the mucosa is closed and it is sutured with 30 or 40 absorbable vicral suture in order to achieve watertight closure now we will discuss about the complications of lefort 1 osteotomy the first category of complications are lying under the heading of anatomical complications which may be nasal septum deviation non union of the osteotomy gap there may be malpositioning of the maxilla nasolacrimal duct obstruction may occur sometimes and nasolacrimal duct perforation may also occur then sometimes septic conditions may occur which will include the formation of abscess sinusitis maxillaris 
brain abscess ischemia can occur from the retraction of the gingiva leading to necrosis of maxilla vascular complications such as severe hemorrhage delayed formation of arteriovenous fistula and pseudo aneurysm may also occur along with epistaxis neurological complications such as the third nerve palsy or the oculomotor nerve palsy there may be cases of total unilateral blindness oculomotor nerve may be injured or severed resulting in oculomotor nerve palsy and ed pupil in which there is lack of accommodation of the pupil of the eye otologic complications such as middle ear tympanometric changes and station tube dysfunction and tinnitus can also occur so these were the complications of lipot 1 osteotomy along with its surgical procedures with this we come to the end of this video i hope you guys like the video it's a wrap for now and i'll see you in the next video with lipot 2 osteotomy until then bye bye and take care.